Welcome to NK Telco Sports. We're here at Four Seasons Park in Minster, where the Marion Local Flyers have traveled to take on the Minster Wildcats. Our sponsors for today's game are Minster Bank, Schwederman's Pharmacy, Keyhole Pizza, Unoxal Supply, Minster Dental Care, West Staff, Hometown Opportunity, Lamb's Insurance Agency, 21st Century Kitchens, American Trim, PSG Automotive Outfitters, Cy Schwederman, Carriage Works, Wilson Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Francis Furniture, Grand Lake Health, Moran's Refrigeration, NKT Productions, First National Bank, Bank First, I'm Dennis Henschen, along with Dean Jackson. We'll be right back after these messages to bring you today's broadcast. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Okay, good afternoon everyone. We're at Four Seasons Park here in Minster where today the Minster Wildcats softball team is going to take on their MAC partners in the Marion Local Flyers in what will be, as I said, a MAC contest. Uh, the Minster Wildcats are currently 4-0 uh, where, uh, where the Flyers are 2-3, and three, I believe. Just a second, let me just double check that. Two, yes, 2-3. Two and three. But uh, today, with uh, adverse conditions, uh, this is Dennis Henschen, and along with me today is Dean Jackson. Dean, we'll wait and see once if the weather does change things. It's almost as what it, it can get without a cancellation. And surprisingly, the field is, all things considered, playable. We see some mixed match colors out there. Of course, I'm guessing that's the diamond drive that they put down, but there's going to be slow spots. The outfield is going to be slick. It's going to be hard to hold on to the ball, so it's going to be not your classic ball game, so don't be surprised if we have some additional errors that you wouldn't see in ideal conditions. That's true, and Minster uh, indicated to me one of the very first things that they want to do is to play error-free ball today, so as you just pointed out, the dirt will stick to the ball on the infield, the ball will be wet in the outfielder's hands, so they're going to have to uh, make the adjustments. And our first batter is uh, Emily Niefeld from Marion Local. She's the third baseman, number four. Looks at that first pitch there for a ball. That was a strike. I'm sorry. There's one fouled off to the left. Out of play. That will count goes to 0-2. Dennis, I think more than anything else, they're just happy to get this ball game in, and especially with conference play, you may not get another game. You start canceling uh, other games, non-league games, just so you can pry these in. But then both teams have got to be able to play on that night. So, yeah, it's tough. It's been a rough spring for spring sports, outdoor sports. And the 0-2 pitch. Swung on, popped to the right side. Second baseman calls for it, and she has it. So Neufeld is re retired on a fly to the second baseman for out number one. And that will bring Lexi Arling to the plate. She's the center fielder. I'm sorry, folks, we'll have no statistics for the Marion Local girls. We were unable to make the connections over the Internet, and they couldn't get them to us. So we're going to struggle with that one. First pitch there to Lexi is there for a strike on the outside. She's the center fielder. Actually, it's raining maybe just a little bit harder now than it's rained in the last hour. The early forecast that I see, and I'm going to let you... Hold off there. That's uh, swung on a miss for strike two. Go ahead. The early forecast that I had read earlier today says a lot of the rain was coming after 5 o'clock. So if that's true, then we're seeing it. Mm -hmm. I saw that earlier, but then later this afternoon. And that one is at the knees for strike three. So Arling goes down via the look K. That's out number two. 
And Sam Perrin steps into the plate, the number three hitter for the Flyers, number 19 on her back, second baseman. On the mound is Jenna Poppelman. The first pitch to Perrin is sliced off the right side over the screen, out of bounds. Strike one. Poppelman's thrown 75 innings already this year. She's uh, played in uh, 13 games. That means she's pitched in every game they've had. And she's been the starting pitcher in 12 of them. That one is fouled back over the screen. Strike two. So very quickly, we're out of balls at home plate. Like we said, the outfielders will have to watch it. First of all, the ball will, if there's a line drive, it can get through you a lot faster. It's not going to bounce up. It will stay low and go. I'm not expecting a lot of gambles today because gambles are going to lead to slip. They're going to be slippery conditions anyways. But yeah. There's another one fouled off right side over the fence. Blue looks to his pocket for a ball, doesn't have one. Another one enter, another ball entered from the dugout. And you got to remember that when the ball comes back in from the foul territory, it may have to be wiped off and dried off. That 0 2 pitch, swung on, hit up the middle, shortstop touches it, can't grab it, on with a single right there for Perrin. So Sam is down at first. That brings up number four hitter for Marion, number 31, Lauren Sanders. Dennis, I'm not so sure that that would have stayed in the infield if this was regular conditions. I agree, I agree. So, Lauren Sanders at the plate. Hitting from the left side. Looks at that one wide and high. On the uh, Marion local squad, I believe they come in here with about six seniors. I'm not quite sure yet how many seniors are on the uh, Minster squad. I am now told they have five. So n not, a, not a case of uh, youth versus maturity in this case. Both teams should be evenly powered that way. And that one's on the outside corner for strike two. I think that makes the one ball two strikes. Great placement on that pitch. I don't know that there was a lot of speed to it, but you couldn't advance for a better pitch. Correct that. It's one, two balls, one strike. The two one pitches outside, so the count goes to 31. On deck is Amber Schmitz, the pitcher. The wind and the fire by Poppelman. Hit up to the left side. Left fielder under it, near the line, has it. And that's out number three as the as Sanders flies out to left field. So four up and three down. And we'll end up with the bottom of the inning with one hit and one runner left on. We'll be right back. American Trim's story started in 1951, and our long family legacy continues today. We are a third-generation family-owned business with locations in Sydney and Walpaw and we're hiring for manufacturing positions on first, second, and third shifts. Part-time and full-time positions are available for entry-level and skilled individuals. Please apply at www.amtrim.com or in person. American Trim is a proud sponsor of high school sports and our communities. Come be part of our story. Coming back at Minster Field now, and the Wildcats will be coming to the plate for their first try, first swing. They're going to be facing Amber Schmitz, who's on the hill for the Flyers. Sorry, as I said, I have no statistics on her, but she throws from the right side and uh, probably does a pretty decent job. Don't know her ERA, but for the top, for the Wildcats in the top of the order, we're going to have uh, Carla Richards. Danielle Barhorse and Taylor Holman. Those are the first three up, maybe more to follow. Second baseman, center field, and shortstop. 
Carla Richard comes in. She has one home run, 11 RBI on the season, has scored 23 runs for the Wildcats. Of course, she will be followed by Bar Horse, and we'll get you up to speed with her when she steps in. Richard is, Richard is batting 523 on the season, an on-base percentage of 562. So that means she's on base 50% or better every night. She's a base runner then. So Richard is at the plate, pops that up to the infield. Well, beyond the infield, second baseman out, reaches, and makes a nice running catch going backwards to the outside, outfield for the first out on the first pitch. Fly to the second baseman. Danielle Barhorse, the center fielder, comes to the plate. Our horse on the season, a 308 batter. We're seeing some good leadoff hitters at the top of the lineup coming in here with. She's on base with a 345 on base percentage. Got two first, home runs and 13 RBI. First pitch to Danielle was there for a strike. That one's rocketed down the left field line. That's going to go all of the way, all of the wall. Danielle goes to second, round second, pulls it up, and Richard, or, uh, Barhorse is standing at second with a two base hit. And Taylor Holman comes to the plate. She's the shortstop, number 11. That ball by Danielle was ripped like right now. She hit it just inside the line. Third baseman is only maybe four foot off the line and couldn't get it. I think they refer to that as the Sinai double. Yeah, well, that too, yeah. That one is fouled off the end of the bat. Strike one on Holman. Jenna Poppelman, number four hitter, coming up next. Holman batting 620 on the season. 13 RBI. All of these early batters have a lot of pop. Yeah, I don't even, I thought I had it someplace, but I don't know. Minster's team average is way up there. I think they're over 350 together. And there's one that goes behind the ankles. That's for a ball, so the count evens on one and one. Ace is up. One on, one out, one and one on a batter. Holman with an open stance, closes it as the pitch comes, looks at it outside high and wide. Two balls and one strike. Still dripping, we're maybe getting a false sense here. Some of it's coming off the roof with no spotting, but it's still raining. And that one goes wide again and the count goes to 31. She's got a place to put her, but I don't know that she wants to put her there. So three and one on Holman. And that one's outside, ball four. The thing that I noticed about that at bat, there were a couple pitches in there that were certainly biteable that she could have went on, but she held off. And good eyes, yes. So Jenna Poppelman, pitcher versus pitcher here in the fat one, gets by everybody, goes to the screen. The runners move up one base, and now the ball goes back to the pitcher. Umpire looks at it. As I said, they're going to have to dry these rascals off in between uh, outings or in between pitches when they need new balls to come in because they're going to be wet. It's like a football game late in the year yeah. when it gets wet and they've got a a person, the manager, who just wraps those footballs up with a towel. You need a ball boy on each of the foul line, yeah. Okay, Jenna Poppelman at the plate. That one is hit just outside the third base line. Foul. So count evens on her one and one. Runners are at second and third, so they're in scoring position for Poppelman. Alice Schmeezing is on deck. The right fielder. By the way, she's batting 341 on the season, one home run, and one or 11 RBI. There's one line drive to third baseman who gloves it. The dive back to the base, not in time. So a line drive shot there by Poppelman. And 
and that retires her. So Alice Schmiesing, the right fielder, steps in. Laney Hemelgarn on deck. And the first one is swung on and fouled off just off the end of the bat. So Schmiesing finds herself in the hole 0-1. Schmiesing a 4-0-7 batter on the season. And now Blue goes over to the third base dugout, which is the home of the Wildcats. So he is, I think, looking either for newer softballs or drier ones. And everybody mask up. And we're ready to go again. Alice Schmiesing at the plate. And that ball is wide. Two balls, one strike. Two out, two on. Schmiesing looks at the next pitch. That's outside. We've got Barhorse at third, Holman at second. Next pitch. Foul at the plate. I believe that brings the count to two and two. Once again, got to change the uh, little round orange. Dennis, she really had a swing at it, but it got a jam there on the inside. Yeah, she just got a small piece, pounded it right down behind herself and the catcher. Okay, Schmeezing looks at the next one. She lifts that towards left field. It falls in front of the left fielder, takes a bad bounce to the left. One run in, two runs are in, and Schmeezing is at second with a double. Wow, big hit. Big hit. So Holman scores, Barhorse scores, and Minster Wildcats take a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the first. Laney Hemmelgarn, first baseman, steps in now. Likewise, swinging from the left side, or the right side, I mean. You know, one thing, Coach Hemmelgarn will have that crew in the dugout keeping that towel busy. Ball's in, ball's got to be dried off. And then go back to blue. At home plate, we have Steve Moore. And uh, out in the infield, we'll have John Derryberry. And that one is fouled back. So once again, ball's wet. And even though they dry them off, they just don't have complete chance to dry off completely. So they start getting just a little damper. If the pitcher's hands dry, pretty good grip. And there's a line drive over the shortstop's head. That goes between the outfielders all the way to the fence. And another double there by Lanny. Hemelgarn as Schmiesing comes all the way around from second to score at home, so that's run, th run number three for the Cats. And a double there by Laney. Now Lindsey Albers, the third baseman, steps up. A 389 batter this season, 14 runs scored. She's driven in five runs, trying to keep this inning alive. There are two outs. All these runs have scored with two outs. And that one's inside. She jackknifes to get out of the road of that one. And Dennis, I, we talk about the ball being wet, but I haven't seen anything. You know, we haven't seen any wild pitches. We haven't seen any bad throws yet. So they're no, we haven't. Through it. No, we haven't. They're fighting it off, yes. And that pitch is likewise fought off as it's hitting the ground there right at the plate and then squirts off to the third base dugout. And Laura Sanders brings it back to the blue, and blue exchanges it, and now it goes back to the circle. And we're ready for the next pitch with a 1-1 count on Albers. And that is outside, 21. I like that pitch, just the way it faded to the outside that you know a lot of batters would have bid on that. 
Yeah, a little a tough to lay off. That one again, followed off at the plate. Almost went in the identical same place as the last one. So, number 10, Lindsay Albers, the third baseman, staying alive. She's got a duck on the pawn down there at second base. Three have scored already in the inning. Emma Schmiesing, the catcher, is on deck. And there's another one of those tight pitches just to have to lay off. She began, but she pulled back. Count goes full now, 3-2. Runner does not have to go. There's one popped up, but over the screen and out of play. So count remains the same, 3-2. Once again, Blue is not happy with one or two of the softballs that were probably, I'll call it older balls, not game ready. He goes to the Minster dugout, gets one, brings it back in, gives it to Sanders, and Sanders throws it back to the circle. And that's there for a strike as Albers took that one right on the knees on the inside for a strikeout. So that's out number three in this inning. But Minster pushes three across as we head to the top of the second. It is Marion Nothing, Minster Wildcats, three. At 21st Century Kitchens, we know that every home has a style to go with it. From first-time home buyers to families with the pitter-patter of little feet to teenagers taking over the kitchen, 21st Century has what you want customizing the style, layout, and price point to fit your budget. Kitchens by Craftmade and Quality Cabinets, countertops by Wilson Art and Cambria, along with availability of granite, marble, and wood. See what's in store behind the yellow door for your 21st Century Kitchen. Schwiedemann Pharmacies began serving the people of Auglaes County in 1916 when Urban Schwiedemann purchased the building and business from J.H. Hoffman. The New Bremen location is one of the longest running pharmacies in the country, with over 110 years of serving its patrons. Since then, four more stores have been added, Coldwater, St. Mary's, Minster, and Wapakoneta to round out the group. Our services include prescription refills, home medical equipment, nursing home services, customized compounded medication, vaccinations, and so much more. Hey, we're back here at Four Seasons Park where the Wildcats have taken a 3-0 lead after one. We're going back to the top of the, or to the top of the second. And Anver Schmitz, the pitcher for Marion, will be up. She'll be followed by Moeller and Parrington. Pitcher versus pitcher. First pitch to her is outside for, or on the outside edge for a strike. The bottom of the first was a tough inning for her, not because she threw poorly, but because Minster was so disciplined at the plate. Very disciplined. They uh, want to, I'll call it, exercise their good bat control right away in the first inning, coach told me. He said, we just have to come out and we have to be dominant. I really have a feeling he wants them to get after it right away so that they don't sit back and waste, what do you want to say, one rotation through the lineup before they actually think about getting aggressive. And also get the get the would be win if there's any type of rain delay or yeah. cancel game if it doesn't become. And there's a ball hit down the left field line, not playable. If it doesn't go the distance is what I'm saying. Right. So Schmidt steps back in and she has a one two count on her. Mara Moeller on deck, the left fielder. And Rachel Parrington, first baseman. There's one shot the other way. Saw a little military softball left, right. Left That's right. right. So Schmidt's hanging in there. One ball, two strikes. And the next offering to her is popped up the middle, right, bounces right in front of second base. Nobody can get it falls harmlessly for an infield single, so she's on at first. So Schmidt is down at first. Mar Moeller comes to the plate now for the Flyers. Left fielder, Rachel Parrington, the shortstop, will be on deck. 
Now, Dennis, I want to get your logic behind calling that an infield single. I'm not saying that I would disagree with you. I want to hear why you say that was an infield single rather than an error. Uh, just unplayable. Unplayable. The ball hit the ground before anybody could get to it. They couldn't, clean, they couldn't cleanly glove it and then pick it and scoop it and throw it. So if I were the official scorer, and everybody wants hits. That's why I don't have any heat on me. <laughs> everybody likes hits. So that old batting average goes up. No, I, I feel that's a, that's a clean infield single. It just hit where it's hit where they aren't. I mean, you have the atom balls, which are hit right at them. And then you have those seeing eye singles. Right there was one, but it never left the infield. And she, I would have thought you were going to say that she had to make a haul to get it. <laughs> Now there's a shot to left field, foul. So Moeller gives that one a ride, but it goes foul. You know, she had to take a track of about 15, 20 feet if she would have been able to make the play. And she still almost did. Right, she touched it, but it, there's just no way. That's just like an outfielder diving at the ball and it goes off their glove and you know they can't make a clean play. So it's not an error, it's not. There's a swing and a miss, and I didn't see it if it's a foul ball or just a wild pitch, but there's no advance on either runner, so I assume foul ball. Didn't see blue go foul, but 0-2 on Moeller. Schmidt's down at first with a single. And there's one hit back to the pitcher who goes to first. That takes care of Moeller on a little easy 1-3 first out, but Schmitz moves to second. I don't think that's what she wanted, but it works to advance the runner. Yeah. Oh, they called it an illegal pitch. Okay. All right, so back that all away. And there, that one is swung on and missed. There's the strikeout. So Moeller actually does go down via the swinging K. So Sch Schmitz is still down at second. She did not have to return. Parrington at the plate, the shortstop, number three. She shows bunt, pulls it back. Dropped by the catcher, but no advancement. In a day like today, a bunt may be your best option. Well, that makes everybody scramble. You're right. Kara Evers is on deck. And once again, we changed uh, pumpkins. A dry one comes in, a wet one goes out. I don't care whether it's baseball, softball, wiffle ball, whatever. There are so many things that you can do with a bunt. There, and once again, she showed the bunt. It pops out of the catcher's glove. The, the runner le continued to go from second base, finds herself at third. I'll give her an SB on that. I don't know. That could be a pass ball. I would give her a stolen base. Yeah. Nobody asked me, but. We're not official scorer, so it doesn't matter. Okay, Rachel at the plate. She shows the bunt again. It's popped up, but popped behind the catcher. Really no chance on that, but she picked it up right away, but Parrington comes back to the plate. As a former catcher, nothing bugs you quite as much as those foul tips like that that are just beyond your reach because, you know, you'd get three or four game, yeah, three or four easy outs. If, if you, you can just, get them, yeah. Kara Evers is on deck for the Flyers. And that one is ripped at and fouled straight back. Once again, exchange the ball to the dugout for a dry one. One out, runner at third. And that one's inside at the ankles, ball. Only got one out, got an opportunity to score here for the Flyers as they now trail after one, 3-0. The wind, the pitch, again, fouled straight back. So, count holds, 2-2. Two -two. Carrie Evers on deck, the first baseman. 
looks in for the sign and now takes too long. Perrington steps out. And that one's not there for ball. Count goes full. There's room at first, but I don't think she wants to put her there. Three and two on Parrington. Runner at third. The windup throw. And that's it. I'll be darned. That is a right on the inside edge. Strike three. He really likes the inside pitch. Yeah. That's the second time today that we've had an inside pitch for a strikeout. Yes. So that brings Kara Evers, the first baseman, to the plate. Number 25. And she looks at a pitch there for strike. A right-handed batter. Swung on and missed. That one is low for a ball. And there's one pop back. It's going to make it over the screen. No play. Rain has now picked up a little bit in its intensity. As we said, it is about as wet as it can get without being canceled. Diamond Dry does its job. And that's high for a ball. Years ago, that dirt would be maybe pretty tacky by now with this amount of rain. But that brick dust really, really works. It's amazing what they can do for drainage with fields, too. Just the technology and the insight that they've developed over the years. There's one shot off the right side, foul. Count holds, 2-2. Two, two. I remember a tournament game a few years ago where the field was littered with puddles. I mean, it, there was no way it was playable. After about 45 minutes of some groundskeeping and some diamond dry or diamond dust, whatever the material yeah. of choice yeah. is. There's one swung on and missed for strike three. So that's out number three. The Flyers have a, a potential runner at third, but cannot push them across. So as we head to the bottom of the second, the score remains three for the Cats and under the Flyers. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Jingle Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. As a business owner, do you find yourself reviewing too many applications? Or are you the job seeker filling out dozens of applications in an attempt to find employment? West Staff has been bridging the gap between employers and employees since 1988. Jobs range from manufacturing and clerical to specialized fields such as quality control and engineering. West Staff has the ability to operate as your company's entire HR department or simply payroll employees on a attempt to hire basis. West Staff, your partner in business. All right, we're here again. Minster's at the plate. They're going to send number eight, nine, and one to the plate here in the bottom of the second. And that one's inside for ball. Emma Smeezing to the plate. She is a 333 batter on the season. 10 RBIs, scored 15 runs this season. And the next offering to her is likewise inside and tight for a ball two, 2 0. She'll be followed by Mara Schmeezing. No relation, I am told. The catcher and the right fielder are Swiss sisters, and that one is a ground out and over to first. 
So that's the first out of the inning. Now goes Marsh Meesing, the left fielder. Smeezing hits it to third. Third baseman has it. Scoops, fires over to first in time. Big play all the way around the stretch, the throw. Okay. That sends us back to the top of the order. Where Carly Richard is up for the second time in two innings. She flied out to the second baseman in the first, in her first attempt. And there she pops one back behind the screen. The catcher has room and has it for out number three. So three up, three down in a rather quick fashion. We go to the third. We'll be right back. For over 27 years, the knowledgeable, reliable, and experienced staff at Lamb's Insurance Agency has been providing superior auto and home insurance to the people of West Central Ohio and Indiana. The team's understanding of the agricultural community and farming operations is second to none. We support the local communities because we are, well, local. If you are looking for excellent claim service, stop by or call today for your quote. Lamb's Insurance Agency, representing Ohio Mutual Insurance Group. At Joint Township District Memorial Hospital, your comfort and care is our number one priority. Our surgical nerve blocks are a great way to reduce pain and can be used for arm, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle, and foot surgeries. The nerve blocks decrease the stress of surgery on your body, requires less anesthesia and pain medications, and in many cases can offer relief for several days. Visit GrandLakeHealth.org for details on all of our services. And we're back here at Flyer, at, uh, at the Wildcats field as the Flyers come to the plate for the third time. They're gonna send uh, number nine, one and two to the plate. So Brooke Hardings, the right fielder, steps in for her first chance, number 35. And she'll be followed by Niefeld and Arling as we jump back to the top of the order. Nine, one and two. That one is swung on and fouled off to the left side, out of play. First time I've ever done a ball game from this diamond. As, as uh, in the past, most of the games have been on the diamond that if, you, if we have a long shot, see over the center field fence. That is the normal diamond that I have visited for high school, so I don't know, maybe they've changed. They have, I am t this is the second year that they're playing on this diamond, okay? And the next pitch, inside. Two balls, one strike. This is a beautiful facility here in Minster. I think there are probably uh, six Little League style diamonds. Eight, eight Little League style diamonds. One large baseball diamond behind us yet. And the uh, high school boys actually play downtown at the old diamond yet. So nice. Nice facility. And there's ball four, so Hardings gets a free pass. For the third straight inning, Marion Local is at a base runner. We'll see if they can convert. So Niefeld out to the plate, flied out to the second baseman on her first trip. That one she hits to the third baseman who was in close, gloved, and knocks it down, retrieves it. Chases it, picks it up, throws him out at first. So a 5-3 retirement there on Niefeld for out number one. Tough luck break for Niefeld. Great play by the third baseman for Minster. That was Albers, number 10. She was in. She's probably no, probably no more than 45 or 50 feet away, and it was a line drive rocket. There's a the ball fouled back. Strike one. Sam Perrin on deck. Harling, Lexi, she st struck out at her first appearance. Should be followed by Sam Perrin, second baseman. If I'm not mistaken, she was the first one that got 
stung by that inside pitch that that's kind of been the trademark early on. And the next pitch. That's there for strike. Top of the third. The wind, the fire, and that's low. Handled well by the catcher. Kept, at, kept in the infield. Coach Jerry Moeller, head coach of the Marion Local Flyers. And there's a ball slapped over to the right side. It bounces in front of the right fielder. The runner rounds third, the throw is to home, she's there, catcher doesn't have it, and the runner moves on to third base, or to second base as the runner came, all, came on in with the first run, so Harding scores. So Arlings has got a single and an RBI. Went to second on the throw to the plate, Sam Perrin up. Had a single or first appearance. And Lauren Sanders is on deck. Sam, I want that for you. So Sam Perrin at the plate, single or first appearance. There's one out here in the top of the third. Flyers have pushed across their first run. They've got another one down there at second base. And that one is low, but held and handled by the catcher. And the next one, that gets by everybody. That goes to the screen. And Arling moves on to third. So with one out, Arling now stands down at third and a chance for the Flyers to get another run. Sam Perrin at the plate for the Flyers. Count is 2-0 and on her. Swung on and missed, 21. One out here in the top of the third. Pavelman winds, fires that one's high, throw down to third, and they got her. Off and didn't get back, so a little, little uh, two uh, five, quickly retires the second out, and that cleans up the bases, so there's nobody on now. Perrin's still at the plate. Three and one, got the green light, swung on, fouls it straight back. 3-2 is the count to Sam Perrin. And that one is pop foul again, right side. Another ball in from the dugout. And that's high for ball. So Perrin picks up a free pass. Trots down to first base. Lauren Sanders, the catcher, steps in for the Flyers. She flied out to left field her first time up. And that is high and wide. Ball. Two outs, one on, and that one's hitting the dirt to third. Mishandled, picked up, throws over to first. Nice stretch at first base, and Sanders is retired on a 5-3. So as we head to the bottom of the third, it's now Flyers one, Wildcats three. 
Grand Refrigeration in St. Mary's is celebrating seven years in business. We are committed to offering you top name brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid, Samsung, Fisher and Paykel, and Speed Queen. Come in and experience the one-on-one -on -one personal service that you won't get from big box stores. Our delivery installation specialist will assure you that your purchases arrive safely and are installed properly. Grand Refrigeration, exceeding your expectations. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Got a moment here. Let's just take a look at the sponsors for, for today's ball game. I don't know where that one went. Okay, sorry. A little technical difficulty as I unplugged myself. So, for today's game, we have Grand Lake Health, Moran's Refrigeration, Carriage Work, Francis Furniture, Wilson Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Cy Schwederman, NKT Productions, Unoxal Supply, Minster Bank, WKKI K94 FM, Minster Dental Care, Hometown Opportunity, American Trim, PSG Automotive Outfitters, 21st Century Kitchens, Schwederman's Pharmacy, Keyhole Pizza, West Staff, Lambs Insurance Agency, and our score sponsor, scoreboard sponsor is First National Bank. Things first. There's a pop-up behind the plate. Catcher cannot handle it. So, Danielle Barhorse is still alive at the plate. Number 20, the center fielder. She'll be followed by Taylor Holman, the shortstop, and Jenna Poppelman, the pitcher. So two, three, four. There's one hit down to third. Nicely gloved on a backhand over to first. Nice stretch by the first baseman. And very quickly, Danielle goes down on a very nice play. So that's one out. And that brings Taylor Holman, the shortstop, to the plate. Jenna Poppelman, as I said, is on deck. Third base has seen a lot of action this afternoon for both teams. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that pitch. Low for a ball. Holman got a base on balls and scored a run here in the first inning. Or yeah, in the first inning. There's one pounded in the dirt to third baseman on two hops. Another nice, nice play. Easy gravy hop, however, but nice play. So two up, two down. And Jenna Poppelman, the pitcher, steps in. She hit a line drive shot to third in the uh, first inning and got her nothing, but she contacted the ball well. She'll be followed by Alice Schmeezing, the right fielder. And there's one hit to left field. That drops and right on the line. Hit the white chalk. She's at second, round second, and that's where she's going to stay. So Poppelman pulls in with a double. And that brings Alice Schmeezing, the right fielder, to the plate. Dennis, sorry to get excited there on you. It's all right. Very good. A little excitement. So pinch runner now, I believe, coming on. And that pinch runner is Emma Emily Stokes. Emily Stubbs, I'm sorry, I said Stokes. It's Emily Stubbs now running at second. And that one is there at the knees for a strike. So two out, one on. Pop 
pop them in the pitcher gets a pitch runner so she can go back rest and get ready for the next inning and that one is popped over the screen foul ball 0-2 the count Lanny Hemmelgarn on deck Schmiesing singled in her, uh, no, she doubled in her first at bat. And that one's there for a strike three. So nothing more than that. As we end the third with the score remaining. One for the Flyers, three for the Wildcats. We'll be right back. The big game is right around the corner. Are you ready for it? Come into Francis Furniture and find the right fit for you and your friends in our Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. With Lazy Boy Premier Sofa and Sectionals, you can custom order a look that's just your style. Choose from hundreds of decorator fabrics or choose genuine leather for its luxurious feel and durability. Come into Francis Furniture today, the area's only Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big healthcare strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits, and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. NK Telco Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays of high school baseball on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD Channel 503. Today's broadcast can be seen on Wednesday, April the 25th. It's tomorrow at 6 p.m. And then you may view it again on the 26th, Thursday at 8 p.m. Now you can also once these are uploaded, you can watch all of these uh, games on demand at nktelco.net. First batter grounds to third, or to shortstop. Shortstop has it over to first for out number one. Again, a pretty routine afternoon fielding for these infielders. So Schmidt goes down a little 6-3. And that brings Mara Moeller to the plate, the left fielder. She'll be followed by Parrington. The shortstop. And that ball is low for a ball. 3-1 the score here in the top of the fourth. And that one's off the handle. Foul ball left side on the ground. Blue says just send it to the dugout and dry it off. Moeller at the plate struck out in her first appearance. And that one bounces there. Rachel Parrington on deck. Moeller swings, flies one pretty well to center, and goodbye softball. It's out of here. Moeller with a single jack out of the stadium for run number two for the Flyers as she touches them all. So a home run by Meyer Moeller. And that mounts it to 3-2 in favor of the Wildcats. Rachel, Ken Rachel Parrington coming to the plate. Didn't think it had enough when it actually left the bat. But when the outfielder turned around and looked up, I thought, uh-oh, it could be off the wall for sure. And it was. So, Perrington at the plate, one out, one run in. That's a strike. Dennis, she did something there that any bunner does not want to do, and that stab or poke at the, at the ball. Right, and there she offers at that one, and she held it back, but didn't get it in fair play. Because what poking does is it's going to send the ball in the air and it's going to send it in a direction. You want it to drop. In general, most bunch you want to drop. True. And then the ball a little bit rather than energize it. So 
Farrington back again, squares again, fouls it back again, and is that strike three? It is. She offered, bunted it foul, so that's a K for out number two. So Kara Evers, the first baseman, comes to the plate. That's the fifth strikeout for Poppelman. Yes, and uh, two, yeah, two of those have been caught looking. So almost a split there, three swinging, two looking. And he gives that pitch to her as a strike on the outside part of the plate. Carrie Evers at the plate, the first baseman, swung on, fouls it back. Brooke Harding's on deck, the right fielder. So, Poppelman looks in for the signal. Winds, fires, and way outside. Too much time to think about that one. One ball, two strikes, two away here in the top of the fourth. There's a ball hit in the center. This one's playable though, and she has it. So that ends the inning, but Flyers put another one on the board with a home run there by Mara Moeller, and they tighten the score a little bit. It's now two for the Flyers, three for the Cats. We'll be right back. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. Here's the thing, if you're the kind of guy who eats, sleeps, and breathes farming, who gets up at dawn, determined to get the best crop and the best yield, why surrender to the mercy of the water table? Cy Schwederman Incorporated can lower your water table to an average of two to three feet below the surface, allowing you to grow stronger, healthier plants that root deeper, that are more resilient to the elements, that enable longer growing seasons, and can produce higher results in the fields and in your pocket. Trust CSI, your drainage experts since 1946. Okay, we're back here at Wildcat Field where they're going to send number six, seven, and eight to the plate and maybe more. And that first batter is Lainey Himmelgarn. And she's been up once and she's had a single. Uh, I'll take that back, it was a double. She had a double. She had the two RBIs to start. Wait, 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 she had the one RBI. She had one RBI the way I see it, yes. Because there was only one person on base, that was. Yes. Schmeising got the two RBIs. Yes. And there's another one ripped down the left side. This is one of Vic's favorite granddaughters. So Lainey Harrington at the plate. She'll be followed by Albers and Schmeising. Two balls and one strike on Hemmelgarn. And she follows that one back, 2-2 two, two count evens. And if you haven't guessed it, her father is the coach. So she might hear about any action that takes place on the field while she's in the dugout, and she might see it again at the table. So down at third, looking at dad for uh, instructions, and he says, keep your ball, girl. <laughs> so 2-2. Two, two. There's one pretty well jacked, but it's at over the left fielder's head. So. Hemmelgarn around second, trots into, around first, trots into second, pulls up there with her second double on the afternoon on another well-placed thing, a hit that went right over the left fielder's head. Lindsey Albers, the third baseman, comes to the plate. Lindsey struck out in her first appearance. Emma Schmeising will be on deck. So 
baseman, number 10, Lindsey Albers, the third baseman. Once again, we have to get dry ammunition on the field. And that one is not there for a ball. Schmitz, the pitcher for the Flyers. Sanders, the catcher for the Flyers. There's a ball hit into the center field. Kind of sliced to the right. Almost, got, almost played the outfielder, but she was able to retreat. Well played by the uh, outfielder as that ball had a little slice on it. So that's a long out. That brings Emma Schmeezing to the plate. Emma's the catcher. She lifts one high to left. Second baseman is underneath it. Okay, that one's caught for out number two. So Amar Schmeezing steps up now. Hemelgarn is still down at second. Schmeezing is the left fielder. There are three Schmeezings on the squad. This one is not related to the other two. And the other two ladies are twins. So Emma and Alice are twins. But Mara is not in their family tree. And that one's on the inside edge for a strike. Couldn't see the plate, but boy, I almost thought the ball broke a little bit, but the batter didn't jump, so I guess I, he got a good look at it. That one is drilled over to uh, shortstop, who makes a nice stretch, snares it at the end of her glove. Right, a nice catch for out number three. So one, one runner reaches base but gets no farther. So after four complete, the score remains. Three for the Cats, two for the Flyers. Brand presence is everything. Is it time to create a video that promotes your business? NK Telco has a solution with NKT Productions. NKT Productions can create a national caliber commercial or video specifically to your business needs and demographics. Utilize NK Telco ad insertion and your video is made available to 6,000 plus subscribers in eight local communities on 23 major networks. Take advantage of the overwhelming traffic that video gets. Visit nktelco.net for more information. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory, so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Okay, as we enter the fifth inning here, uh, the next game for the Flyers will be Thursday night when they uh, venture out of league and they go to Salina and play the Bulldogs over there, or at least play the Bulldogs. I'm not sure of the, of the exact spot. That's Thursday. And then on Friday, the uh, Flyers will be playing Spencerville. Again, I'm not sure whether it's home or away. There's a ball well drilled. Left field, oh, nice catch by the Cat Wealth left fielder as she reaches up and snares one on about her last step. So, nice catch, nice hit, but just an out. So, Emily Niefeld steps in. She's been up twice, out twice, flied out, grounded out. And that one stay, goes foul. She'll come back. Lexi Arling to follow. We're back in the top of the order. This was 9 1 and 2. Popple in this season through 80 innings. She has given up 48 runs, including the two today. Struck out 37, five so far this afternoon, and has walked 36, none this afternoon. And has her ERA of 333. 
And that one is swung on a miss. Yeah, if uh, Mara Schmeezing doesn't snatch that ball off the end of her glove there, that's easily a two base hit, depending how it hits the fence and whether it comes right back to her or squirts away. There's a ball that's swung on and missed and straight back. So, Harding's got robbed. Schmeezing got an out. So, Niefeld at the plate. And she swings at that one, and that's high, and that's strike three. That brings Arling to the plate. She's uh, been up twice, struck out, and has a single. She got all the way around the third, and then got, I'll call it caught stealing. Actually didn't get back in time as the catcher and the third baseman hooked up for a tag out at the plate. So Harlings had a single, one for two. Sam paired on deck. Now it goes to two and zero oh now on Arling. Poppelman on the hill for the Wildcats. There's a ball popped up in the infield. Second baseman calls it, has it for out number three. So as we head to the bottom of the fifth, score remains two for the Flyers, three for the Cats. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Minster Dental Care continues to offer advanced dental technology in a state-of-the-art facility. Our professional team offers experience in general dentistry and orthodontics, including services such as CERA and wireline orthodontics. Board-certified pediatric dentist Dr. Philip Slonkowski ensures our littlest patients have a positive, safe, and a comfortable experience. We are unconditionally committed to excellence in everything we do. Minster's got their big Katie Horseman Classic this weekend, where on Saturday, is it Friday or Saturday? It is Friday evening. There will be a, there'll be two games at one time. There's four teams in here. And uh, Minster will be taking on Toledo Christian, while uh, Rushi and Bradford will be squaring off in the other one, uh, other one, and then the winners will play again later on. So I think that's all done in one evening. And that's the Casey, Hor Casey Horseman Classic. There's a ground back to the mound. Over first, in time. So bang, bang, play at first. Dennis, I had a chance to catch up with Katie Horseman a few years ago at the All-Star Game in Cincinnati. Had a 30-minute conversation. What a treat. Yeah, she's never at a loss for words, <laughs> I can tell you that. We talk about her days playing in the old All-American Girls Professional Softball League. It was, well, baseball, but it was softball. Right. During the war years, I guess there was a void there for, I call it a summer sport. Swung on a miss outside there to Barhorse. And what is the movie's name? A League of Their Own. Yeah, and she had a, she made an appearance, I believe, in that flick. I think I've seen it once. But, yeah. She's a, she's a gem. She's got a lot of experience, a lot of stories. She was a shortstop, pitched a little. Uh, she told the story of when Jimmy Fox was the manager of the team. And of course, the, I, be, I believe the Boston Slugger, but he was the manager for the team. And he was, they had him do batting practice one day. And he was hitting these balls consistently 400 feet over the highway, which past the, where the diamond was in Fort Wayne, landing in the parking lot of a factory, which just seemed like moonshots. Okay. 2-2 to 
Barhorse, that's hit to center, and it's gonna fall in there for a single. So Barhorse is on with a single. Taylor Holman steps to the plate, the number three batter in the lineup. She'll be followed by the pitcher, Jenna Poppelman, in the four, four spot. One out, one on. So the shortstop, Taylor Holman at the plate. And there's a throw down to second, not close, stolen base. Barhorse is there. So Barhorse moves down to what we'd call scoring position. One out, Holman's been up twice. She's got a base on balls and a run scored and she grounded out five to three. So she's one, 0 for one on the afternoon. Chance here maybe with a hit of some length to score another one for the Cats. There's a ball hit to third. Ground, the third baseman has it. Looked at the runner, but didn't scare her. And as she goes to first, the runner advances to third on, on that fielder's choice. So a little 5-3 again on Holman for out number two. And Jenna Poppelman steps in, the pitcher. She's been up twice, has a double to her credit. First pitch to her is a strike. Alice Schmiesing, the right fielder, is on deck. And Dennis, one last Katie Horsman story. She told me the story is right. She was 16 when her first season in that league. There's another one hit to third. Another nice play at third. So that's out number three. So after five complete, the score remains two for the Flyers, three for the Wildcats. We'll be right back. We knew that we could use hometown opportunity as an avenue to reach out to people, not just in this community, but across the state. Hometown opportunity was my saving grace, honestly. We viewed it as a, a great resource for us to get the word out about our company. I saw all the commercials, billboards, and I thought, just give it a shot, why not? And they offered me a photography job on the spot, which was thrilling because I've been searching for months. The hometown opportunity website definitely makes that connection. American Trim's story started in 1951, and our long family legacy continues today. We are a third-generation family-owned business with locations in Sydney and Walpaw, and we are hiring for manufacturing positions on first, second, and third shifts. Part-time and full-time positions are available for entry-level and skilled individuals. Please apply at www.amtrim.com or in person. American Trim is a proud sponsor of high school sports and our communities. Come be part of our story. Once again, you can view this broadcast of tonight's ball game on Wednesday evening, that's tomorrow, at 6 p.m. on Channel 3 or 503 on NK Telco. And then on Thursday evening, you'll see this broadcast again at 8 p.m. So make sure you either set your alarm clock or set your DVRs so that you can take, these, take this game in if you wish. There's a fly to the right side, the right fielder over, under, up with her glove, and has it. And once again, don't forget, you can buy, you can get all of these games on demand at your convenience at nktelco.net. So don't be afraid to check up the schedule. Okay, that brings Sanders to the plate as Perrin has just flied out to right. One away here in the top of the sixth. That one goes to the screen. So now they're going to Switch pumpkins. Kadok. Lauren Sanders, the catcher, up twice, out twice. Fly to left and grounded to third. And that means the pitcher, Schmitz, will be up next. That one is not there. Count evens. No, it does not. Two and one. I'm sorry. Lauren Sanders, the catcher. Three and 
three and one now on Sanders. She steps in, Poppelman looks for a strike. Pounded in the dirt at the plate, count goes 3-2. Sanders, the catcher, number 31. 3-2 pitch, hit to third, two hopper, up, over, and retire. So as you said, third base has been a very busy spot for both teams today, Dean. I'm going to give you the number of plays they've had there in a minute, so give me a little bit of time. But I'm not stretching it. That is... Yeah, I know I've got a few 5-3s written down here. And the pitcher for the Flyers is up. Pitcher versus pitcher. Amber Schmitz. A 1-0 pitch. Hit well to left. Left fielder is there though, and under it, grabs it for an easy inning. Fly to left for out number three, three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the six with the Cats coming to the plate. We'll be right back. First Century Kitchens, we know that every home has a style to go with it. From first time home buyers to families with the pitter patter of little feet to teenagers taking over the kitchen, 21st Century has what you want customizing the style, layout, and price point to fit your budget. Kitchens by Craftmade and Quality Cabinets, countertops by Wilson Art and Cambria, along with availability of granite, marble, and wood. Save what's in store behind the yellow door for your 21st Century Kitchen. Bottom of the six, Cats will send five, six, and seven to the plate. That'll be Schmeezing, Hemelgarn, and Albers. Alice Schmeezing, she's been up twice, a single and a strikeout, scored a run. So one for two on the afternoon, looking for number two. Since that big first inning for Minster, no inning has seen more than four batters. Not correct, I didn't notice that. We've had a couple one, two, threes. That I know. And that one's also outside for ball two. You got your totals there on your 53? Yes, nine times. Both teams combined. Well, combined. And of course we've got the uh, put out from the clutch dealing as yeah. well. Yes. There's a ball hit up the center. Just gets off the glove of the uh, shortstop and trickles into the outfield. So, on at first is Schmeezing with a single. And Laney Hemmelgarn at the plate. Been, big, been the big time hitter this afternoon, up twice and two doubles. I'm very impressed that she was even able to get leather on that ball. There's a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, it was. Now, she might have been a little more into the hole than she is right now, but. Uh, there's a one, oh, there's a rocket right by her, and it gets by the center fielder. That brings the runner around to second. Schmeezing comes around third. She comes in, so we're going to get a single and then an error on that. So Alice Schmeezing scores, and Laney Hemmelgarden is down at second with a single and an error. So, Lindsay Albers comes to the plate. Run in here for the Cats. Pushes the score to 4-2. Little insurance there here in the bottom of the sixth. And that's there at the knees for a strike. 
Lindsey Albers, third baseman, struck out in the first and fly to center. She'll be followed by Emma Schmeezing. And that's there for a strike. Took a little off of that, but it drops it right in the zone. And that's on the inside and chased and didn't get a piece of it, so that's a strikeout. Jordan Burleson steps in. She's a substitute. Just a second one if we can get you the stats here on Jordan. She's played in seven games this season. The 182 batter has one run driven in, two hits. The hey. senior. All right. Thank you, Dean. And Ready to go. And that one's right downtown. So Burleson at the plate. She's batting for Emma Schmeezing, the catcher. And that one is right, took a little off and right downtown. Probably wishes she could have that one over. One out. One on, one in. And that's wide. So the count goes one and two. Burleson pitch hitting for the catcher. One, two swing. And that gets by the catcher. Burleson down to first and she's safe on the strikeout pass ball. So even though she got a strikeout, she doesn't get a credit for the out there. That brings Mara Schmeezing, the left fielder, to the plate. I think, yes it is. Thought maybe Coach was gonna make another substitution, but right now, nope. Got runners at first and third. There's a pop fly to the infield. Right, third baseman gloves it and Runs the runner back to the bag, but it's out number two. And we go back to the top of the order where the second baseman, Carla Richards, steps in. Carla Richards up three times, out three times. And that one's hit on the left side, and it's foul. Right close to the line. That one was hit to the left side. All of the outs by Richard has been to the right side. Well, I, I guess you could say the one with the catcher, even though it was a foul ball, was a little bit to the right, but that's about it. And she looks at that one for strike two. So she finds herself in a hole here a little bit. 0 and 2. Two outs. Runners on the corner. One in. And that one's beat in the dirt again, but to the left side and foul. So the count holds at 0 and 2. Richard's got to stay alive now. With the chance to get another run in here. Two outs have come via the uh, cave, both swinging, but on the one that was a pass ball, so the runner is safe at first. And the 0-2, that's high. One and two, jumps out of the catcher's glove there just a moment, but no advancement. Amber Schmidt on the hill for the Flyers, doing a nice job. Having only given up four runs, three in one inning. Striking out five. And there's a 
One hopper right and back to Amber. She gloves it over to first for out number three. As we head to the top of the seventh, it's four for the Cats, three, two for the Flyers, and we'll be right back. Schwiedemann Pharmacies began serving the people of Auglaize County in 1916 when Urban Schwiedemann purchased the building and business from J.H. Hoffman. The New Bremen location is one of the longest running pharmacies in the country, with over 110 years of serving its patrons. Since then, four more stores have been added, Coldwater, St. Mary's, Minster, and Wapakoneta to round out the group. Our services include prescription refills, home medical equipment, nursing home services, customized compounded medication, vaccinations, and so much more. I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course. It's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Kingo Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Entering the top of the seventh now here at Wildcat Field. Mara Moeller, last time up, Jack City over the center field wall. Never a doubt. There she hits one again up the center, only this is gonna stay in the park and that should be there for a single as she goes to first. So, Parrington now steps in, the shortstop as we lead off the seventh with a single by the left fielder. The shortstop comes to the plate. She's been up twice. She's struck out twice. Getting some more dry ammunition. Oh, that's raining again a little heavier, okay. I'd like to see this good game be completed in regulation. There's a ball beating the dirt foul at the plate. Rachel Pennington, the shortstop for the Flyers. As I said, been up twice. She struck out twice, once looking, once swinging. Mara Moeller, the left fielder, is on first. And that one is high. Score is four to two, in favor of the Flyers. I'm sorry, in favor of the Cats. And that one is high again. So the count goes two and one. Two balls, one strike on Rachel Parrington. See the runner down there at first now. Now we're back to the home plate view. Over to first in attempt pickoff. Umpire Derry Berry says back in time, safe. Three and one now the count on Parrington at the plate. Will they give her the green light or will she take? She got the green light, fouled off the right side, off the screening for a strike. Count runs full now, three and two. Now will Coach Muller put the runner in motion? If he wants to score a run, he doesn't want to get doubled up. Three, two pitch. Down to shortstop on one hop, over to first, over to second, over to first, not in time. Runners out at second. So that's the first out. Safe on a fielder's choice at first is Parrington. And she's down there. So Kara Evers comes to the plate. Evers has been up twice, struck out and flied out to center. And Coach Hemmelgarn's gonna go out and either talk to his kids or he's going to talk to the base umpire. He's talking to Derry Berry now. I can't tell you just how hard it's raining, 
but I do see puddles with splashing on them, so there is some precipitation falling more than a mist. It might just be in one of those little bands that comes through. That's about the way this afternoon has been. So, down at first is Rachel Parrington. Kara Evers at the plate, the first baseman. Evers looks at that one low for a ball. One out here in the top of the seventh. And that one is low and a quick throw down to first, way over the first baseman's head. But the, <laughs> that made some of the uh, Wildcat faithful take a deep breath. But the, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, throw it to your sister, you're right. Yeah, throw it to your sister. That's, they know what they're doing. This is just a little uh, deferring, just a little foolery. Handled there by the right fielder very well. And no advancement by the runner. So count there goes uh, low. Count is 3-0 and oh to Evers. One out. One on. So Poppelman needs a strike. There's a fly ball. Hit foul behind the plate. Catcher over. Has it. And they have the runner, and they got it. Double play, they got the runner off the bag as the runner ran on the pitch. Didn't apparently see or find out that the ball was in the air. And Evers fouls out to the catcher. Barhorse is uh, tagged out at first as she can't retreat in time. And that completes our game. After seven complete, it is the Marion Local Flyers two, the Minster Wildcats, Four. We'll be back to summarize the game for you and give your uh, give you us your final our final thoughts. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. We'll be right back. As a business owner, do you find yourself reviewing too many applications, or are you the job seeker filling out dozens of applications in an attempt to find employment? West Staff has been bridging the gap between employers and employees since 1988. Jobs range from manufacturing and clerical to specialized fields such as quality control and engineering. West Staff has the ability to operate as your company's entire HR department or simply payroll employees on a attempt to hire basis. West Staff, your partner in business. For over 27 years, the knowledgeable, reliable, and experienced staff at Lamb's Insurance Agency has been providing superior auto and home insurance to the people of West Central Ohio and Indiana. The team's understanding of the agricultural community and farming operations is second to none. We support the local communities because we are, well, local. If you are looking for excellent claim service, stop by or call today for your quote. Lamb's Insurance Agency, representing Ohio Mutual Insurance Group. Okay, we're back here at Minster where the Wildcats have just won four to two over the Marion local Flyers in a very well played game in what we might call very sloppy conditions. Uh, Dean Jackson is here. He's gonna give us a rundown of all the stats and uh, highlights and viewpoints. I think we'll have the final game, final play on the game uh, coming up. I think we got that on replay. We'll try to work that in here. So you can see that was ended up in a double play at first with a runner uh, on first trying to stretch a get to second as the ball was popped behind the plate. So right now, here's Dean Jackson with the stats. Minster jumps on the board with a three run first inning including an two RBI double by Holman. Holman, Courtney Holman was the batter then a few plays later. A correction that was actually Abby Schmiesing, who got the RBI, two RBI double, followed by Himmelgarn, one batter later. She got the RBI to put up Minster 3-0. Himmelgarn, by the way, three for three today with an RBI. Schmiesing finished with two RBIs. She was just, she was two for three as well. Pitching numbers, oh, let me, before we get that far, nice job by Marion Local. They kept Minster off the base pass for the most part the rest of the game until the sixth inning when they added another insurance run. No batter, no batters, more than four batters in any inning 
between two, three, four, and five. But again, in the sixth inning, a leadoff single by Abby Schmeezing. One of her two hits today, she comes around and scores later on an air on a center fielder after Himmelgarn reaches on a single. And that was the final four, of course, for Minster. Marion Local got on the board in the third inning. As Harding scored, she got on with a walk, got around after a, a single by Arling to make it 3-1. They added another in the fourth, a homer by Moeller, and that capped the scoring for Marion Local. Pitching numbers, Amber Smith's four runs, seven hits, five left on base, striking out four. Meanwhile, General Poppelman for Minster, five hits, five strikeouts, two runs allowed. No walks and two left on base. But again, Dennis, great game. Actually, all things considered for the weather conditions. We uh, didn't see any weather-related errors that I would say. But for the most and give credit to the decision makers that thought, hey, we can get this game in, and they did, and really without any issue. Well, what does help, we're only five miles apart. You're not going to chew up a lot of bus gas just to get here. So that is one thing, but you're right. Try to push through, get these league games completed, and, and almost it's, it's as wet as you can get without not having called a, a you know a game because of rain. And it's still drizzling as I talk now. So how long this will last, I don't know. Um, so yes, that kind of completes today's get game with uh, Minster uh, winning uh, four to two. I'd like to run through our today's sponsors: Grand Lake Health, Moran's Refrigeration, Carriage Works. Francis Furniture, Wilson Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Cy Schwederman, NKT Productions, Unoxal Supply Company, Minster Bank, WKKI K94 FM, Minster Dental Care, Hometown Opportunity, American Trim, PSG Automotive Outfitters, 21st Century Kitchens, Schwederman's Pharmacy, Keyhole Pizza, West Staff, and Lamb's Insurance Agency, and our scoreboard sponsor, First National Bank, Think First. Like to thank the people who made this broadcast possible today in the van, the brains, the production crew. Well, okay, the director and the producer, we'll put it that way. Isaac Sell and Scott Robinson, two great guys. On camera, we got Tyler Wolf and Caleb Crusett. Your announcers today were Dean Jackson, I'm Dennis Henschen. Hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. And one last time, the score today, Minster 4, Marion Local 2. Good night, everyone. Hey. <laughs>